And we are almost through with this series of ranking the uh, top 50 Triple Triad Advanced Tournament performers of all time. Our last group is really strong. It is late, long-time giants of the game. So players who played real chunks of time, but that either were entirely in kind of the latter half of the site, or had some from each, but played late enough, I thought they were a better fit in this group. Um, there's definitely at least one player who I probably should have put in the other group, maybe more, but, you know, we'll see. So we're going to start off with Amo, and I think he's the perfect person to start talking about this with, because I think maybe I'm just overreacting to my experience where a bunch of players got good at the end of my run, and I didn't adjust my kind of mental evaluation of their play for their actual improvement. So I ended up underrating a lot of players that were really good because most of my time I saw them as, you know, middling or weaker players when in fact they may have been really good for a while, but I missed the part where they obviously got really good. So I think of Amo as this great clan leader, this supportive guy, um, this fantastic closed player, and I do not think of him as a tournament performer, though I know he always played well for his clans. Um, and so maybe I'm over-reading into how I see players rather than others. But just about the time I was heading off the site, he started racking up result after result. And his achievement score is 1125, which puts him ahead of all the one-time winners who never did anything else. It puts him ahead of every single person in the short-termer group we talked about. It puts him only narrowly behind some other winners. Again, of everyone we're going to talk about, the max score there is 1375. 1125 is not far off that. Um, he's ahead of every uh, one in the last group we looked at of the early non-winning greats. He's ahead of every single one there except for Jaws and Mafi Josie. So Amo really starts just getting tournament result after tournament result come kind of that 2013-14 period. Um, and somehow, you know, this isn't what I know him for, but it's also I don't think what he's more generally known for, because his biggest impact was as an avalanche leader and as this dominant closed trade player. And so somehow this is his third most impactful thing on the site, and it's still just a huge score. And his best run was a Triad Wars 11 finals, where he beats Raceland Majir, uh, peak piggy man, peak diacon and tight. This was right the time when they were putting up their best showings and turds in the semis before losing to Koner in the finals. And you'll see his best wins later. He was, you know, this list is obviously a bunch of good players, but he was very threatening to um, the best players of the time. And so I sort of feel I've condescended a little here by um, implying you might not think he's good because he was fine for a while, but I think he really made a jump and it was really impressive. And it's easy, and I'm using him as sort of a stand-in for other players in this group that you may also, um, if you played around the time I did, not think of as great tournament players and turned out to be great tournament players, but it won't fit your, your perspective of what you saw from them. And Amo, that may be less true of than some others to come, but I wanted to talk about it here that... You know, if you saw the early period of Delial, right, the first five tournaments Delial plays, he goes out in the first round every time. Uh, some under the name, actually, maybe he gets one second rounder under the name Video Kid, but basically never has a real run to his name. And if you look at the early Occult fan articles, you'll see people going, we know this guy is good, but he has to put it together. And then he is like one quarterfinals run, and then he starts winning everything. And I think, you know, obviously not as extremely as Delial, but there are a bunch of players here who they were kind of good, but simmering under the surface for a while and then caught fire. And if you just saw the kind of under the surface time, they may not, you know, with Delial, people knew he was really good, but you may not have realized someone was as impressive as they were. All right, next up we have Cool Spot. Don't know a ton about Cool Spot played a really long period of time, could have easily been put in either the long-termers or the short-termers, but in the end, I thought it was a better long-term fit because a bunch of cool spawns, cool spots icons came at the very end of the site in like four-round tournaments or five-round tournaments where making the second or third round was an icon. And so I thought it was a more natural fit in a group where other players in the group also benefited from the more easily attained icons. And I think it's easy to write off some of these players. A lot of them were earning their icons, you know, 2009 to 2012 or 2013, and there were still mostly six-round tournaments then. 
Um, so most of these players maybe downgrade a little on their achievement scores, but not that much. Um, cool Spot, I think, is someone we want to downgrade a little bit more, but has some other really cool achievements. Uh, first of all, second best uh, clan win percentage of any person ever, and well ahead of the field. Um, if you look at, you know, myself, Yojimbo, uh, Seto, Delial, we're all around 70% or a little below in clan results. And there's this jump from third and fourth, which are around 72, 73%, up to cool spot at 83%, easily second best performance. And the only person there behind who played a reasonable sample is Great Sephiroth. Um, if I lowered the sample size required, then FF Player 7, um, who really underrated historically, and maybe I can contributing to that by not considering him for this top 50. Spoilers, not considering him, but went 4-1 and one for 80%, but he'd be the only other person close who played more than two or three tournament games. Um, and best run was in the sixth site championship, making a semifinals, beating Tezuka, Sephiroth, Slash, and Fisto. Uh, Fisto never put up consistently good tournament results himself, but kept getting huge wins against various winners. And if you look at the kind of who's knocked off the most people list, uh, Fisto pops up pretty high there, and then loses in the semis to Great Sephiroth. Uh, next up, we have Foyer, and this is another one of kind of like Fisto, but a little, I think, better performing overall, of has a lot of wins against just great players. You know, Delial, Cookie, Sir Smokes, Turds, Dark Lord, Kha'Zix, Jaws, right? This is, if you count just how many wins you have against huge names, this is around 20, top 20 all time. You know, this is around 20th and is the exact same count that Dark Lord, Grat, Meta, and Scythe have. Um, and so, and it's ahead of people like Kaos and Doc Evil. Obviously, Doc Evil didn't play long, but most players listed here do not have as many really classy wins as Foyer does of the Mighty Intuition. And so his kind of, if you just look at who he beat and don't look at who he lost to, he has this incredible resume. But the thing about Foyer is he played really quickly, including in tournaments, and often just didn't calculate. So if you check games he plays and watch them, you'll often find him blowing wins or blowing ties with three or four moves to go. But you'll also find him just intuiting these incredibly strong moves really quickly. And in a kind of calculation versus intuition divide, someone like me, um, I will try to calculate my way out of trouble or calculate my way to a solution. I, I mean, I have intuition strengths, but when against my back's against the wall, I'm going to calculate. And Foyer is very much at the other end of the spectrum where he's going to trust his intuition to do fantastic things, and often it did. And so he played lots of competitions, you know, every little, uh, lots of fun tournaments, clan versus clans. He was playing a ton of them, and he played them all quickly. And I think he had really good instincts, but the speed and the non-calculation aspect meant beating star players didn't mean he didn't also lose to much, much weaker players. And so of everyone we're going to consider, he's around 50%, and most of the other players are around 60%. Some in the high 50s, some in the low 60s, occasionally you'll get higher than that. But the range of players I'm looking at is for this 25th to 50th spot is kind of that 55 to 67 percent range. Um, there are a few that come out higher, um, like Mafi Josie, Piggy Man, Jaws are probably at the top end of that range. People like Kazik are right around 60. Um, you know, but somewhere in that range, just about everyone I'm talking about is. The, uh, the very short termers go a little higher, but obviously it's a small sample. But my point is, Foyer is by far the lowest win rate of anyone I'm going to consider for this group. But the wins are so impressive. His, his intuition at its best put up such good results. I, I, I think he deserves consideration. So then we have Homer. And I mistakenly put him in the, uh, the rankings at the very end of the last video. My bad. And um, he peaked at the start of the middle period. So kind of 2007, 2008. 2008 is when I found the site. He could easily be put in the earlier category. I probably should have. Whatever. Um, he wrote some of my favorite strategic occult fan articles. I liked one on hands. I liked stuff just talking about selecting cards for what kind of cards you'd use and hands you'd make. Um, different hand designs, ways to build hands. There was so little information sharing on Triple Triad Advance, 
And it's one of the reasons I've been interested in building up AI stuff is to say, if we take a principle and push it, how good can that player get? And the kind of, here's, is this something we should have focused on more than we did? Is this something people did more often than they should have? If we try out these different styles, where does it get us and what turns out to be important? And there was just so little information sharing, and I really appreciate the players who put the time in to say, here are things I've figured out strategically. And that's a real baseline that was useful. Reading his article was useful to my early hand building for tournaments. Um, Nimloth's strategic articles are what got turds to realize the game was more than just capturing, right? And got him to become a really strong strategic player. Uh, I'm sure there are more examples. People have also mentioned Piggy Man strategic articles, some of mine too. Um, and I'm going to mention someone later who I think really pushed trying to share strategic information in the hopes of getting somewhere further. If you look at other competitive games like chess, there's so much writing about it, of people trying to share information and reach new conclusions. And there just wasn't on Triple Try at Advance. And it meant if you were ahead of the curve, you had a really big advantage. But it also means I'm not sure how much we pushed how good players could have been. Um, so anyways, I really appreciate what Homer did there. His best result was Triad War 6. He made the semifinals, and then he never played it. He got really busy and just conceded the match to meta, um, which is a real shame because it's he never got another semifinals run, and it would have been neat if he could have pushed that further. Uh, meta was very good, but Homer certainly has a chance to win that. Probably goes out in the finals because the other two in the finals, it was a three-way finals, were Delial and Seto. So I would guess, you know, Homer would finish third there. But it would have been nice if he could have gotten a chance at a finals on the resume. And he has uh, spoken that he kind of regrets this because, you know, it was really his shot. Um, he is one of the better win rates in this group. He's in like that 62-63 range, which is pretty strong for this group. Um, but his lower activity didn't play quite as many tournaments, and that's going to bring down his achievement score compared to others in the group. Um, Kazdan. This is another person I don't have a great feel for, also known as Fusion Cloud, but he played a bunch of different periods, and in each of them he was kind of a 60% plus player. He peaks in 2007 with a semifinals run and has another good run right around there, beating Grat in that run. But even eight years later, he was beating Dark Lord twice, when, you know, Dark Lord along with Yojimbo are the two strongest players at the very end period of the site, and Kazdan takes him out twice in basically Dark Lord's only losses that weren't to Yojimbo. Um, or two players that there's some suspicious stuff about. Um, so like Cool Spot, I'm listing him here because he grabbed his icons at the end. I could have easily put him in the earlier group, but a bunch of his achievement points are from these shorter tournament runs, and I wanted to make sure to mention that because I would like to make sure I'm judging players accurately and keeping in mind the things that might drop them off. Then we have Kazakh, and by my count, and I keep increasing my count because I keep checking more of the, the history, but he's only one of four players to uh, have made multiple finals and never have won any of them. Um, the worst by this standard, or the unluckiest, is Chickeny, who made three finals and never converts, but Kazakh on two finals joins a group of Ulti, Midas, and uh, who am I forgetting? Nope, it's gone. I think I'll list it later, so we'll we'll bring it up then. Um, he wins the Fight for the Frozen Flame 3 TTN tournament, so at least he got something under his belt. The TTN tournaments tended to be four rounders, but usually pretty solid opposition. Delial was often in there. Uh, Turds, Vid, Cookie, Great Sephiroth. Um, I don't know who played that one specifically, but usually there was a a pretty solid field um, with some top end talent and a lot of middle talent. Um, I found him this incredibly defensive player, so when doing my style video recently, I listed him as the ultra defensive style. I think he was one of the easier players for me to place. Um, and I personally, of the two players I put in that style, had a lot more trouble with Slash than I did with Kazakh, which may have been a strength difference. It may have been I just happened to line up stylistically better against Kazakh. I don't know. Um, but he is one of only three players to have beaten Seto twice in a tournament, which is, you know, an incredible achievement to 
hang your hat on, and the two other players to have done so, Yojimbo and Delial, also, of course, incredibly impressive. Delial managed to beat Seto three times, um, but twice is an absurd amount. And he's also just... Uh, the Poland teams are so strong. He's probably only the fourth best Polish player of all time, which is just insane. And, like, what a what an incredible country of producing triple triad talent. Um, I think only Canada is really comparable for kind of talent for size of country. They have very similar populations, both somewhere in the mid-30 millions. And Canada has Delial, Seto, Piggy Man, Foyer is probably the top four. And Poland has Nightwish and MC, Karmazin and Kazakh as their top four. And if you went further down, I think Poland would hold up better with their 5th, 6th, and 7th best players, like Gafgarian, really good player. Um, but these two countries strike me as just for how many people there were, just so talented. And overall, both countries, I think, were more talented than very good countries like England and Germany, who have twice as big populations. Uh -huh. Can we go to the next slide? There we go. All right. Uh, Midas. So Midas was a troll. Um, constantly posting that troll image of, I don't know how to describe it, but you probably know the one I mean, but ends up, but really cared about Triple Triad. And I think he's one of the people who put in the most serious work to try to get better at it and to try to share information in a way where improvement was possible for him and others. So he wrote some closed strategy articles, and I think it was when he was briefly in, I want to say Avalanche, I think it was on the Avalanche forums, because it was never in a very public place, but him playing closed games and going through his thought process and looking at why he made his decisions so others could learn from them, but also where maybe he wasn't sure on his decisions and thinks there were other possibilities, and looking back at that and just trying to figure things out and may explain for weaker players, but figure things out for himself too. And I, I really, really appreciate work like that because I think so much of the learning in Triple Triad Advance had to be you're playing and you just have to pick up from playing, but it's so hard to learn in a game just by playing. And you'd see ideas others did and maybe you'd pick those up and incorporate them in your game. But all the work was on you. There was no like hand to hold to help you, help pull you up. And I really appreciate players who tried to create that kind of hand for them and others. Um, Sir Smokes, who said Midas was his best rivalry, um, they played twice really deep in tournaments. Midas beats Sir Smokes in the Ward semifinals and loses to Seto in the finals. And then they meet in the uh, 11th Site Championship finals and Smokes wins there. I'm actually not sure on order because I think these both happened the same year. I have it listed in this order, but it's possible the other one happened first. Um, not clear, but. 2013, Midas and Sir Smokes really went at each other. 2012-13, period. Um, he wins Clan Wars 10 with Boss. He might have won some other teams with uh, championships with them, but I didn't have him listed. And I also, I really feel like he won a major tournament, and I cannot find it. And if he does, he rockets into my top 24. Like, his achievement will clearly be up there. His peak will be clearly high enough. And... If I'm missing a tournament and he won that tournament, which I guess I'm probably not, but I, I really feel like I am, um, then he's somewhere in the top 24, probably around 20th, 22nd, somewhere in that range. Um, and yeah, I, I have a lot of issues with how Midas and people he was around carried themselves, but... I also really appreciate the work and time he put into Triple Triad and thinking about the game. Uh, next we have Patriot, and I just want to apologize here because I made him a promise, I made it repeatedly, that someday I'd do a big run, big boss run of Metal Gear Solid 4 someday, which is to beat it in under a certain number of hours, I believe without ever getting spotted or ever having some, some various things happen. I never did. Uh, he is be much better than me at the Metal Gear Solid games. I never did runs where I got the uh, the good awards. I just beat them and enjoy them and like the stories. Um, but there were a bunch of games we played together. Uh, we, we did some Resident Evil 5 co-op together for Mercenaries, if anyone's played that, which I had a lot of fun with. And he was also better than me at that. Um, there might have been something... Oh, we played some Uncharted 3 together. That's the one game I was better than him at. But uh, in general better, really good game player than I am. Um, 
But I think for Triple Triad Advance, he was always a decent player who was more important as a clan member, later a clan leader with elites and chat presence. And then sometime around 2011-12, after he's been playing at this, you know, okay level for a few years, he makes this real push and starts getting much farther in tournaments. And I was paired with him in the Rufus quarterfinals, and I thought he would be an easy round for a quarterfinal round. Um, and he was not. He gave me the most ties I had in the tournament um, of any ra single round. Uh, you know, um, every other round I won in the first game or two. And in the quarterfinals against Pat, I think it was seven ties or something, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere like that ties. And all of them uh, very balanced and just not able to find any advantage against him. And that's where it became really clear to me, this guy is this very solid sound player and very difficult to beat at that point. Um, so his biggest achievement was actually slightly earlier in Rhinoa 7, where he loses in the finals to Nightwish, who is his teammate, but their team takes out a team of Delial and Seto, which is just about the most loaded team possible, uh, MC and Fury, and then Slash and Kamikaze in the, in the semifinals. And Pat, I think, would be the first to say Nightwish was the one who achieved the run, but he was certainly a competent part himself. And much like Amo, I think I think people will be surprised at quite how many icons and deep runs he achieved. He ends up with a thousand total achievement points, which is the same as Jadat. And Jadat is regularly mentioned as the greatest or one of the greatest players to never win a tournament. You know, when I put up the video on Piggy Man saying, here's my case for Piggy Man is the greatest to win a tournament, you know, I got a response from Slash of Time saying, uh, Piggy's very good, but I think Jadat and Chickeny and Kha'Zix were better. I think those were the three he listed. And I think Chickeny is, in fact, the greatest player to never win a tournament. But Jadat and Kha'Zix are way up there, and Pat has basically the same achievement score as either of them, um, which is really remarkable. And he did it mostly in 2011 to 13, before tournaments shortened quite as much. So I would give significant credit to, um, to all of his runs. Then we have Piggy Man. Already made a video about Piggy Man, so won't talk more about it, but we'll hit the quick bullet points. Um, he was a creative, an elite handmaker, and I think this probably hurt his overall tournament performance because he did some fine tuning, figuring out, used weaker, lower level cards, and against really good players who were just using the most powerful cards, this was going to be a significant disadvantage. And despite that, despite that he went to the cards he liked to use rather than the cards that were most powerful, the fact that he reached a higher ELO rating than anyone else I'm considering in my 25th to 50th rankings. He's higher than uh, Jaws, he's higher than Virgil and Bren, he's higher than Kha'Zix, he's higher than Jadat, he's higher than all these players, he's higher than everyone I'm going to talk about here. And... He did it despite, I think, using hands that were often a disadvantage. And he just had this run of, you know, three semifinals and four tournaments, clearly doing it all at once, showing that he had the skill to be regularly making it there. And just remarkably skilled player who has... Um, he recently mentioned that he thinks one of his real strengths was in defense because he found it, he wasn't a great calculator. He found it hard to calculate that well. And so he started building hands and finding defensive moves so that he, sort of so that you'd have more time to calculate so that you're not having to figure other things out because you've already brought a lot of ideas together that you're familiar with and then you can get into the game and because you know these familiar moves you're aware of because you figured out this hand in this really interesting depth because you're prone to more defensive moves you have more time to figure out the rest of the game, and it's such a complicated game that anything you can do to make it easier on yourself helps, which is very much the reason, like, for good chess players, you learn openings, right? Because it makes you have more time for the rest of the game, you have positions you're familiar with, and Piggy was really bringing that kind of ethos over to Triple Triad, weirdly, despite not having that ethos at all when he started playing chess for a while. Um, so... His bi the big knock against him compared to some of these others is he never made a finals. And a lot of the other great winner non-winners did make a finals. Though some others like Mafi Josie and Tezuka never made a finals either, and they're way up there. Um, he's also one of the... There are not that many people I'm still close with from my time, but Piggy Man is very much one of them. Real stand-up guy, wonderful guy, 
a great clan leader at elites and also um, I ended up towards the end of my time making this group that was sort of called a clan rotundity not really a clan we didn't compete in anything but it was a it was a group not a complete group but a group of some of my closest friends there and uh, Piggy Man and I and Ray and Sir Smokes were the sort of core four members of that with a few others who were a bit less active in chat and uh, yeah really important part of my time on Triple Triad. Speaking of really important on my time on Triple Triad, uh, Ray for a long time was definitely my best friend out of Triple Triad, um, and TTA was not his main thing. Um, he was just this phenomenal swimmer competing in the Commonwealth Games in England. Um, if you, we once looked at his speeds in different events, including ones he was just doing casually and kept winning medals in, if you transported him to the 1960s, he would be Michael Phelps in the Olympics, right? He would have just gold medaled everything possible, and by sometimes by huge amounts. And it was kind of fun because, you know, you look at like 1960, and he's just, he's Michael Phelps, but better. 1964, Michael Phelps, but better. 1968, suddenly, he's not Michael Phelps, but he's still really good. Multiple gold, some silver, some bronzes. And then 1972, he's picking up maybe one gold, and after that, he drops out. But this is to speak to kind of the advancement in skill and strength and speed in sports, but also that, like, it's incredible to be good enough that, you know, within, like, you know, well within my parents' lifetimes, Rhea would be the greatest swimmer to ever live. And just fantastic swimmer, also played triple triad. He was a great clan leader at Guardians. He was a key member of Elites. He was a, a key, possibly the key member of Rotundity. Um, but he was also, like some others here, took a little while to get good, and so if you only saw him at the start, you know, he was in that noob period for a while. I think something that really helped him was he had a very strong memory, and once he saw ideas, he could figure them out and hold on to them so they could just easily come to mind for him, and this, you know, pseudo-photographic memory that lets him very exactly remember how things in the past have went. Um, real problem for Sir Smokes, he kept knocking out, you know, his best friend, and also at the end of his run, and the reason he's here, is he just started get, making the quarterfinals of every tournament he played, and he has this run of kind of four or five tournaments at the end where he just earns an icon in all of them, and it's one of the really good runs, and it's sort of lost to history because it was after or at the end of Occult Fan, um, and it was as activity waned a bit. But these were usually still in the six rounders. And just, you know, it's one of those runs that looks like a bunch of Koner's runs. Of just quarterfinals every tournament you play, like one semifinals in there, beat some good players, and then as soon as it's the quarterfinals, uh, stop beating good players. Uh, then we have Tezuka. And the write-up for Tezuka on the right, I think, was written by Kamikaze in around that must be so triad wars 4 i think this is 2006 so he shows up in 2006 maybe the end of 2000 or maybe 2005 and he starts winning and he's just clearly like the new talent of that period and uh despite playing over lots of different time and not remaining all that active he ends up earning an icon in over a third of his tournaments which is a top 10 rate all time he has the 7th, tied 7th, 8th highest Triad Wars win rate at 75% in Triad Wars tournaments. There are some people who think, you know, only Triad Wars count, and if you think that, Tezuka is way up on the all-time list. He wins Clan Wars 5 with Avalanche. He's also, and I didn't know this so much at the time, but was a creative handmaker. He liked to do things like play hands with only Chrono Trigger cards, or play hands using some low levels, and using things that intentionally handicapped him to force him to figure out things that work nicely. And so both somewhat creative, but also interested in making the game complex and difficult to force himself to really think well. He peaks in 2006-7, shortly after he joined, but is still crushing it in 2015. And like Piggy Man, a lot of semifinals, no finals. So if we look at this group, um, one of the things for a lot of the names that might strike people as not as big names is just how many big wins they picked up, right? Like Amio, Am bleh, can't speak. Amo picks, beats Deli All, Diaconentite, Turd, Scythe, Piggy Man, Moffy Josie. Foyer beats Deli All, Cookie, Turd, Sir Smoke, Starklord, Jaws, Kozik. You know, uh, 
Ram Raminator beats Delia Kamikazes for Smoke Twice and Broccoli. Uh, Tezuka beats Great Sephiroth, Cookie, and Turds Twice. You know, these are some incredible collections of wins. Probably most impressive here is Kazakh, um, with the, the double wins against Seto and wins against Koner, Sujiro, and others. Um, Piggy Man has a nice list, Koner slash and Turds. You know, there's a lot here. A few people that clearly drop off compared to the others is Pat, despite getting some really good runs, doesn't take out that much elite talent. And Homer, um, with his somewhat shorter play time, but also doesn't take out that much top tier talent. But everyone else here, and everyone that you might think to doubt, like maybe you doubt a cool spot, you just look at some of the players he's beaten, and I think it's uh, really impressive groups for everyone here. And I think pretty clearly more impressive set of wins for the players here than the players I've talked about in the previous groups. Um, better wins for these more modern players than the winners had even, than the older players had, than the short-term stars had. I think overall, you look at these wins, um, these players probably played the longest, so it would make sense they'd have somewhat more wins, but just have a really you know, impressive collection of wins. So if we're going to rank them, if we look at Highest World's rank, Cool Spot is tied for top here with Kazik and Midas, but Cool Spot peaks at 7th at the very end of the site when a lot drop off for an activity. So I would downgrade that a bit and give more credit to Kazik and Midas, who achieved it earlier when there were still more active top-end players. Um, similarly, I think Kazdan gets up to 8th at the end, but Kazdan was sitting in kind of that 10th to 15th range for such a long time that it makes sense that at some point we jump into 8th. But the players here that strike me as really impressive are Kazik, Midas, Piggy Man did it with the most loaded 2009 period that the sites had. Um, those are probably the players that would jump out at me for most impressive here. If we look at ratings, we'll see again, Foyer never really strung it together. Um, clearly was a good player, rated well above average but not, you know, in those 2100s where most of the players we're talking about have fallen because he'd have a great game and then he'd have a terrible game. Um, Kazik shows up really impressive. Midas, Kazdan. I'm not sure why I listed Kazdan behind Midas. Apparently, I don't know that 2175 is bigger than 2171. We all make mistakes. Um, but you'll see how far Piggy Man is ahead of the field. If you look at kind of the best runs here, Piggy Man jumps out as the the best performing player at his best over a real period of time. Um, and of course, uh, we've consistently seen kind of a lot of very strong players ending up in that 2150 to 2170 range, and we see players like Tezuka, Rei, Midas, and Kazdan here. Um, for total achievement, Kazik and Midas almost hit that 1500 number that would um, put them in the group with my top 24, but don't quite make it. Um, and then Amo and Tezuka, then Foyer, Patriot, and Piggy, Rei, Cool Spot, Kazdan. Um, this, I think, hurts the case of Cool Spot and Kazdan quite a bit because they were both playing those tournaments at the very ends when it is easier to earn icons. Um, but all the rest here were mostly doing so before then, and their really high achievement scores, regularly 1,000 and above, um, were very much earned. So for me, I think Piggy Man has to be the top of this group, I think. Um, his achievement is a bit below what Kazakh and Midas did, but his peak strength is enough higher that I, I think I have him number one here. Kazakh number two, Midas number three. Uh, though those two are very close. You can look, they're basically tied in every category here. And so if someone wanted to put Midas over Kazakh, go for it. Um, but I think that's definitely the top three. And then Tezuka is pretty clear fourth for me. Um, and then Amo, a little bit lower peak, but really steady, strong performance. And then I have Kazdan, Rei, Patriot, Cool Spot, Homer, and Foyer. And um, you could probably drop Kazdan a few spots if you wanted, but his peak is so high, I had trouble moving him further down. Um, yeah, I wasn't entirely sure how to rank the bottom of the group. I think. I'm, I, I would be very surprised if Piggy Man, Kazik, Midas, and Tezuka didn't make my top 50. I suspect um, a bunch more from this list will. Those are the ones that I think are basically locks. Um, well, Homer and Foyer are probably going to miss, but I don't know yet. Um, haven't put together the list. Uh, this is how I rank the group. Your ranking may be 
very different. But overall, I think it makes sense. And I think each of these players, of course, phenomenal. And if you don't end up making my top 50, that should be taken as no slight at all. As I, I keep repeating, but I'm trying not to have people yell at me. Because what matters most here is whether I'm yelled at. And I think that's the message we should uh, take away from these videos.